Welcome to the next in the series of deck films. This time I'm going to discuss barrier isolation and containment and its use in the pharmaceutical and chemical industries. In this feature, we'll take a look at why this technology is increasingly necessary, how systems are put together, how they will benefit you, and finally, using this technology will finan finally benefit your organization. What is containment and why do we need it in pharmaceutical production? Well, it all comes back to understanding how pharmaceutical products are manufactured. In previous shows, we explained that finished pharmaceutical products, tablets, etc., are made up of excipients, the not the nitric ingredient, the active pharmaceutical ingredients. The ingredient that causes the biggest problem is the active pharmaceutical ingredient. If you consider the manufacturing process, the quantities of active materials required are large for the manufacturer but in reality, the dose for the patient is very small. This means that staff handling the product can only be exposed to a very small quantity, the active ingredient. This is at a point where the product will do no, do no harm to the operator. This is called the operator exposure limit. For some potent compounds, that can be in nanogram levels. To understand what that means, take an Olympic sized swimming pool and add one grain of salt. That would be a typical concentration level, meaning that it's at a point where you cannot see the API or detect it without special equipment. That means that conventional technology, such as putting someone in a safety suit or wearing a mask, simply will not work. Add this to current European legislation where it should be the last resort to put an operator in personal protective equipment, and worse still, for sterile productions where the human operator is the biggest carrier of contaminants and you have a huge problem. This is where barrier isolation technology comes in. Barrier isolation technology does exactly what it says. It forms a barrier between the product being produced and the operator or engineer operating or maintaining the process. Therefore, it protects both the product from sources of contamination or biological matter, which is good for us patients, and it protects the operator or engineers who use the facilities, which is good for them. So how do we decide if we need an isolator? Well, simple. All chemical compounds, and in particular active pharmaceutical ingredients, have a limit below which they have no effect on the human body. This is known as the OEL, or operator exposure limit. To aid companies further, simple occupational exposure bands were developed to simplify the point at which isolation technology should be used, i.e. to keep things in. For sterile systems, we also need to protect the product from microbiological contamination from the outside. Sterility of the product, in very simple terms, based on the number of particles in the air, at sterile levels, this is incredibly low, and the isolator needs to work in reverse, i.e. keep things out. Well, an isolator is in effect a small room through which you access the process. There are two ways to do this. The first and most common is via glove ports. They benefit from being simple to use and easy to replace. However, when something becomes large, heavy, or difficult to manipulate, then we have a further option. That is the use of a half body suit. This is a simple bubble into the isolator, but it gives much more freedom, reach, and lifting abilities for the operator. So how do we arrive at the right solution for any given process or item of equipment? Well, that is where the skill of the design team comes in. And there is no one way of building these systems. Yes, there are common elements that I'll discuss later, but there is no one way. Today's 3D modeling techniques will help the design team quickly establish a good working model. On the simplest systems, airlocks will be used. Then we move to interlocked airlocks with pressure gradients, then onto rapid transfer ports. At DEC, we have a further advantage through our PTS technology to move products from isolator to isolator, effectively allowing DEC to produce a closed loop process. For toxic products, naturally, we are trying to keep things in, so in general, they are held at negative pressure. Now, for sterile isolators, we have a different set of problems because these isolators tend to keep products out. By reversing the airflow, we pressurize the system into positive pressure. The airflow plays a critical element inside these isolators, so we may use both laminar flow or turbulent airflow, which is critical. Now, for you technocrats out there and experts on sterile production, yes, I know it's not quite as simple as that. 
but there are an entire raft of regulations and process requirements for different grades of sterile processes. For those who are interested, a good start is the ISBE Guide to Sterile Manufacturing, second edition, released in 2011. The final caveat is perhaps the biggest of all. That is a very large cost saving that can be achieved using barrier isolation technology. In recent years, there have been papers done by the likes of Boehring and Ingelheim and others in the USA that confirm this point. Also, the regulatory authorities, both in the USA and Europe, are also starting to look very closely at non-isolated systems to determine if producers are really in control of their processes. There really is no reason not to isolate from any perspective. Barrier isolation can benefit your business in many ways, including simplifying your process, giving you closed systems with no cross-contamination, safe process manipulation, more operator comfort, much more rapid batch turnarounds, freedom of staff to move, increased productivity, less waste generation, processing of toxic and sterile products, reduced revenue and capital cost, and reduced failures. I hope you have found this show both challenging and fascinating, and you have learned that this subject is not simple but requires significant skill and expertise to get it right, and that there is no one way of tackling a problem. If you have found this interesting and wish to contact DEC with regards to your specific containment problem, then feel free to contact our team at the address below. Until then, I look forward to seeing you next time on Biz2Biz TV. Thank you for watching.